Hi, in this video, which is gonna be a pretty short video, I've got a quick trick for you if you run into an issue when you're balancing an equation, in particular, if you're balancing combustion equations, because this tends to pop up quite a bit. Now, combustion is awesome. Uh, there's lots of examples we've seen in class. Here's one that's called the whoosh bottle of a combustion reaction happening right in front of your eyes. Uh, this is uh, the combustion of ethanol. And so we know it in a lot of combustion equations. Um, if we're combusting a CH or CHO compound, the products will be carbon dioxide and water. But sometimes the oxygen in combustion reaction equations can give us some problems. And so here's an example. C5H10, which is pentane, uh, reacts with O2 to form CO2 and H2O. This is what tells us that this reaction is combustion. We just need oxygen as a reactant to have a combustion reaction. Uh, CO2 and H2O are gonna be the products. Anytime something like this, uh, C5H10, even uh, CH and O compounds combusting, they're always gonna produce these two products. But when you drop the line and you list out all the elements, what you'll see is that we've got uh, oxygen presenting in a, a difficult situation for us. Um, one thing I wanna point out is if there's ever an element that exists in multiple products or multiple reactants, in this case, look, we've got oxygen in both products. Um, when you list out your inventory of the elements, my suggestion is to write it out like this. Here we've got two oxygens in the carbon dioxide. We've only got one oxygen in the water. But if I put a coefficient in front of one or the other, it's not gonna affect the total amount of oxygens on the right side. It's only gonna affect this intermediate number, and then that affects the total. So that's my first suggestion. My second suggestion, especially for uh, combustion of hydrocarbons, which is, that's what this is, it's a hydrocarbon, uh, is to balance these elements in order. Start by balancing carbon. So uh, I got a five and a one, I wanna put a five up here. So that would turn this into a five. It would also change this two into a 10. So 10 plus one is 11. Okay, so now carbon is balanced. Next, move on to hydrogen. A 10 and a two, I wanna put a five in front of water, and that makes this uh, five times two, which is 10 hydrogens. But it also makes this one in my oxygens a five. Uh, and so 10 plus five is 15. Okay, good, so my hydrogens are balanced. Now look, and this is where the trick comes in. On the left, you have two oxygen atoms, but on the right, you have 15. Now you have to think, well, what number times two would give me 15? And the answer is a decimal, seven and a half. So temporarily, I can put seven and a half as a coefficient, and that would turn this on the left to 15, and I'm good. But the problem is I can never leave a balanced equation with a decimal as a coefficient. It's always got to be the lowest whole number coefficients. So the fast way to get this into the lowest whole number ratio but still to maintain that same proportion is to double all of the coefficients. Now, don't forget the coefficients are the front numbers. So this one here becomes a two. This seven and a half becomes a 15. This five becomes a 10 and this five becomes a 10. And so here's my overall uh, balanced equation, two, 15, 10, 10. It's a quick trick, a fast shortcut. Anytime there's an element that when doubled would give you the final result. Uh, that's just a quick trick for balancing equations, especially with combustion. It's not exclusive to combustion. I just earlier today was balancing an equation in class that was not a combustion equation, but we had to use this decimal trick. Don't forget though, you can't just leave an equation with a decimal as a coefficient. You have to double all of those uh, to get the smallest whole number coefficients. Thank you.